In this task 12, which is now about series and parallel connection, we have two resistors and they should be used for a heater, for a hot plate, for something like this. And with these two resistors, we should be able to get four different resistance levels. We can think about them in a second. And now the question is, what should be the ratio between these two resistors so that we have the same resistance ratio from level to level? So first thing that we can think of is how could I use these two resistors um, individually and in combination to get four different levels. So if I write down the four levels, one, two, three, and four, um, what can I do? Ones parallel are one, are two, twos are one, threes are two, and three is series of our ones are two. Okay, okay, exactly. So we, we, we can assume, um, for example, that without loss of gen uh, generality, that uh, let's say R1 is larger than R2. So the smallest resistance level would be when we have the parallel connection of the two. Then we would get R2, then we would get R1 if R1 is larger than R2. And at the end, of course, we have the series connection of them. Okay, and so now we should calculate this ratio in a way that we have the same resistance ratio from level to level. So if I, maybe I should have uh, not used um, Arabic numbers for this, but letters. So if we call this RA and RB and RC for the different levels. So now same resistance ratio uh, means we have the same ratio, let's say, let's say between D and C, the same ratio between C and <coughs> B and the same ratio between B and A. This is what the task tells us. And so now we can, into this equation, insert all the stuff. So Rd is R1 plus R2, Rc is R1. So then we have R1 divided by R2. This is already the, uh, the ratio here that we are looking at. And we also have um, Rb, which is R2 divided by this parallel connection. So I will at first write it like this. And so for this parallel circuit, what, what I could also write? G1 yeah, 1 over G1 plus G2, but I think it won't, won't be super helpful in this case. Um, remember what we did for the task before, what might be meaningful would be this equation here. So if we if we use this one, so we have R1 multiplied with R2 divided by R1 plus R2. So R2 will cancel and luckily we, we don't get any contradiction. We get the very same thing as on the left side. So we can let's say just neglect the right side of this equation, there will be no new information in there. And so the question is just, okay, how can we calculate this ratio here so that um, R1 plus R2 divided by R1 is the same as R1 divided by R2. Um, yeah. Any ideas for this, how to proceed further? And to be honest, it's now more a mathematical problem. It's not really an enge electrical engineering problem anymore. So we have used all electrical engineering information, put them already into the solution. And the remaining thing is some mathematical problem. So what, what I would propose is we give this ratio a new name and call it, for example, I don't know, k, small k. And so then here we could say, okay, this is k, this is the 
k that we are looking at. Yeah, because the, 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 the problem with this equation here is we have just one equation, but we have two unknowns. Um, R1 and R2. And we are not really looking for R1 and R2, we are looking for the ratio between the two. So let's replace this ratio on this side with some new variable that we call k. And on the other side of this equation, I can rearrange this a bit um, and can say this should be the very same as R1 divided by R1 plus R2 divided by R1. And R1 divided by R1 is, is just 1 and R2 divided by R1 is 1 over k. It's the same as k is, but is the, this, uh, is the reciprocal of k. And so now we know okay, 1 plus 1 over k should be the same as k. Hey, and we found an equation where we have just one unknown, which is k. So the question is, which k fulfills this equation? So how can we solve this? It's always if, if the unknown quantity is in the denominator of some fraction, it's always a good idea to multiply with k. So I will continue here at the top. So then we get 1 multiplied with k is k. Uh, 1 over k multiplied with k is 1. And on the other side we have k squared. And so this looks like some quadratic equation. And we can rearrange it in a way that we say, okay, 0 is k squared minus k minus 1. And so now how do we find k? Say again. Yeah, so there's one equation that we, c we can directly use for the solution. We can yeah, we could also try to factorize it. Um, I would, I would call this minus one that we have there. I would call it p. So p is minus one, and the minus one at the end I would call q. And so then k, we get two solutions for this equation and um, the, the two solutions is minus half of p plus minus the square root of p squared divided by 4 minus q. You have seen some equation like this? And so we just insert the values. Um, p is minus 1, so with another minus gives us plus, <coughs> plus 1 over 2, plus minus um, the square root of 1 over 2 squared is 1 over 4, and minus minus 1 is plus 1. And so we have then two solutions, so k1 and k2. And I will once again use octave to calculate this. So the k1 is 0 0.5 plus the square root of 0 0.25 plus 1. So it will be 1.6 something and the other solution k2 is the same formula but just with a minus and then you get some negative ratio. So we get 1.618 and here we get minus 0 0.618. Okay, so which of the two solutions we choose? Are they both correct? Is just one correct? What would you say? How would you argue? 
you cannot have a negative resistance but if we would have a negative ratio between two resistances it would mean that one of the resistances should must be negative and this does not make sense so this is a mathematical solution to this equation but this does not make sense from an engineering point of view because we cannot have negative resistances so we can only have positive resistances and we get this positive ratio between the two resistors um, and so now if you would assume that um, yeah, maybe maybe let's take a different color. If we would now assume that maybe red, um, that this one here is one ohm. So then, what resistance should we get here? L like this this times k, so one point six one eight ohm. Um, or maybe I should write it somewhere where it's not that squeezed. So here we get 1.618 ohm. So um, then what do we get here? 2 it's simple to calculate because it's just the sum of the two, 2.618 ohm. It's always this 618. And if you do the calculation here, Um, so R2 I just said is 1, R1 is K1 times R2, yeah, so we have this R2, uh, R1 plus R2 is the 2.6 something and if I once again take this parallel collection, interestingly we had 0 0.618. So th th the same is over here but just with a plus sign. And yeah, and, and interestingly, so the ratio from here to here is always times k, times k, times k. Same ratio between these different levels uh, that we get with the four resistors. And does any one of you know? This number here that we just calculated uh, also has a special name. It's the so-called uh, golden ratio or in, in German goldener Schnitt. Um, and this golden ratio, um, maybe we can check the Wikipedia page in a second about this. Um, this golden ratio was first described by Martin Ohm, the father of uh, Georg Simon Ohm, who coined or who found about Ohm's law. So uh, the families at this time, if they were into science, they were into science. So the, the father was a mathematician and he first published or he was the person that made this golden ratio somehow famous. And this golden ratio um, yeah, it's also used in, in arts and it's said to be if you have a picture and if something is arranged in the golden ratio and so on and then it looks especially appealing to our eye and buildings are made in this way taking into account this golden ratio and so on. But I, I'm not an expert in arts so I will not further um, comment on this. <coughs> 